So let's take our Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 14 is where we're going to read. And by the way, we are studying the book of Revelation on Sunday nights. I encourage you to come out. The services start at 6 o'clock. And uh, we're just on chapter 2, so you ain't missed a whole lot. And by the way, you can catch up on those studies on YouTube. Just look up Turner Street Baptist Church and you'll, you'll find it there. Just look for my ugly face there in those little uh, pictures there. And uh, you can start on that study in Revelation. But anyways, Revelation chapter 4, we're just going to read one verse here. I'm going to use this as a springboard. Uh, normally I would preach on mothers, but the Lord laid this one on my heart instead, so I want to be obedient to God. Alright, Revelation 14 verse 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, the Spirit spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them and i want you to pay special attention to those last few words where it says their works follow them now let's pray kind and gracious heavenly father i pray that you'd be with me as i stand before your congregation this morning lord i pray that you'd speak to the hearts of each and every individual where they have need and Lord, we all have different needs, needs so far as those things that we need to get by daily, but also needs to help us to stay in line with your word and with your will. So Lord, whatever those needs may be, I pray that you'd meet them this morning through the preaching of your word. And Lord, I pray if especially if there's one who needs to be lost, I mean needs to be saved, I pray that they'd see their lost condition and Lord, they'd come to you and be saved before it's too late. And Lord, I pray that you'd be with me as I stand before your people. Give me the words to say, withhold anything I should not say, and forgive me of any sin unforgiven in my life that I'd be fit for your use. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to preach to you a sermon this morning I've entitled, Things I Want to Leave Behind. Things I Want to Leave Behind. Now, I told you we wanted to focus upon those last few words. It says, their works follow them. In other words, their works stayed behind and people were able to see their works that they had done long after they were gone. And I'm convinced that our works, whether they be good or whether they be bad, are going to follow us even after we're gone from this world. They'll not be done away with. They will remain even after we're gone. It's kind of like a will. Anybody in here have a will? No wills? Make one and put Tim Towns in there at the bottom of it. But anyways, a will, somebody writes out what they're going to leave behind and who's going to get it, right? So uh, uh, that's the things you want to leave behind. Every one of us is going to leave some things behind. Yes, material things, but you're going to leave behind more than material things. Uh, you know, I want to leave some things behind. Granted, I'm looking for Jesus to come in the clouds, and I'm going to take out of here without dying. That's what I hope happens. And I believe that could very well happen, because the Lord's appearing is drawing nigh. But more than that, uh, I'm looking for, if I do leave this world before then, to leave some things behind. Not just my guns, not just my tools. Uh, not my truck and guitar and, and, or my house and things like that. There's some other things I want to leave behind that's much more important than that. And one of those things is this. I want to leave behind a good testimony. Now, someone might say, you should have heard that testimony so-and-so gave on Wednesday night. It was so eloquent. It was so polished. You ought to have heard it. It was a real tearjerker. Well, I'm not interested as much as the one you gave on Wednesday night. I'd rather be impressed by that one that you live on Monday. Amen? People are not going to remember us by our spoken testimony. They're going to remember us by the life we live every single day when we were among them. And I tell you what, I want to leave a good testimony behind. How about you? I mean, I preach a lot of funerals. But really, you know, who preaches a funeral? The person who dies, the one that preaches the funeral. By the life that they lived and the hope that they had, or the hope that they didn't have, they preached their own funeral. What kind of funeral are you going to preach one day? Every one of you is going to preach one. 
Now, I might preach funeral after funeral, but you're going to preach yours one day when you're gone from this world. What will your testimony be that you left behind? Will it be that you were a servant of God? Will it be uh, that you were a moral person and that you tried to do right? Or will it be that you didn't care? Huh? I want to live a good testimony in my community. I want to be remembered as one who loved God's Word and knew God's Word and lived by God's Word. I would hate to just be one of those people. I'd hate to be somebody that knew God's Word but didn't live by it. And I'd hate to try to live by it without knowing what it said. So I want to be somebody that knew God's Word and lived it out in front of everybody else. I want to leave behind a good testimony. I don't want people to celebrate when I leave the world. Huh? Anybody in here saw a, a Christmas carol? Remember the old uh, Grim Reaper guy? The ghost of uh, Christmas is to come. Uh, took old Ebenezer Scrooge out to the graveyard and he saw people celebrating he was dead. I don't want it to be that way. I want this world to have less light in it because I'm gone from this world because I shine brightly for the Lord. That's what I want to leave behind. I want to leave behind a good testimony. I, 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 you shouldn't be known as just being a Baptist. Now, I'm a Baptist. Somebody asked me before, if you weren't a Baptist, what would you be? And my answer was this, I'd be ashamed. Hey Amen, that's supposed to be funny. But the reason I'm a Baptist is by conviction. I believe it's the closest thing you can find. Are Baptists perfect? No, they're not perfect. Are Baptists the only Christians? No, Baptists are not the only Christians. Anybody who puts their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone for salvation is a saved individual and part of the church. But uh, I don't want to be known as just being a Baptist. I want to be known as somebody who was washed in the blood and dedicated to the cause of Christ. That's what I want to be known as. When somebody wants uh, someone to pray, I want to be that person that they, they, they look to to try to, to get a hold of me so I can pray for them. I want that kind of testimony. And I want that testimony to be left behind that I was a prayer warrior. There's people today uh, who you often see who, who you don't even know what they stand for. I don't want to have that testimony. Huh? You want people to know where you stand. You want them to know your testimony that you're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and that you're going to heaven when you die. That you're an heir of heaven. But there's many people every single day you pass by and I hope you're not one of them that people don't even know where you stand or what you believe. I tell you, y'all to wear your religion outwardly. I know today they're saying, don't do that stuff. You, you don't need to wear your religion outwardly. I tell you what, wear it outwardly is a badge. Huh? We got too many Christians who are undercover Christians. I grew up, we watched a lot of uh, police shows and detective type shows, and we'd see somebody go undercover and they'd have their badge on the inside, and when they made the arrest, they'd say, You're under arrest. Huh? They showed their badge. Before they showed their badge, they thought they were just another one of the crooks. But I told you that's the way a lot of Christians are. They're undercover. They look like the world out there. They act like the world. But all along, uh, they claim Christ. I tell you, you ought to wear your badge on the outside as a Christian. Have a testimony. Let people know where you stand. And when you're gone, people will talk about where you stood. Oh, so and so was a real man of God. You've heard me talk about some of our church members, and I could pick any one of them, but I might as well pick Florence today because always on, uh, on Mother's Day, Florence would get all them kids and grandkids here, and I tell you, we'd be packed out with Hodges. But Sister Florence, she's gone, and one of the things I remember about Miss Florence the most was this, that she'd show up when it was time to go to visitation, and she'd go out there and knock on doors and witness to people even when she couldn't breathe. She couldn't breathe. She, my wife would go with her and she, my wife would tell me after visitation, she'd say, I thought Florence was going to die out there. She'd talk about smothering, but she still did it. She was faithful. And I tell you, we need more faithful people. What will your testimony be? What will people remember about you when you're gone? I want to leave behind that I serve the Lord. Do you think people knew where the Apostle Paul stood? Do you think they wondered about Paul, whether or not he is a believer? 
You think they wondered whether or not Paul was a good Christian? No, they knew exactly where Paul stood because of his testimony. No matter where he was, whether he was in jail or whether he was standing before a king, he was always talking about Jesus. I mean, one time him and Silas were put in stocks and here they are in stocks in a cold, wet, damp prison. And what are they doing in there? They're singing songs unto the Lord. Huh? They knew where he stood. And when I think back to great Christians, I think back to the Apostle Paul. What a testimony he left behind. I want to leave behind a testimony like that. What kind of testimony are you leaving? Now, what will the preacher say at your funeral? Now, I work at a funeral home. Most of you all know that. And working at a funeral home, when a family does not have a preacher, guess who gets to do the service? I do and sometimes it's very difficult to preach a service for people you don't know. Some of them, uh, you can tell by their spirit what type of people they are. And some of them are easy. And then some of them, I tell you what, it's cold. And you can feel it. You can feel the tension. I don't like doing those. But it's odd to stand up and say, I really don't know what this person's relationship was with Christ. Isn't that a sad thing? You want people to know where you are. You want people to have that hope. I was talking to the kids Sunday school class this morning about the rapture of the church or the, or the first resurrection you might want to call it or the catching away, whatever you want to call it. But it says there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 when describing that event, it says suffer not as those who have no hope. I mean you're going to suffer some because you're going to miss them. Your heart's going to break. Uh, when, when you don't get to, to take their hand physically and walk or, or give them a hug or, or get to see them. Uh, Brother Rick got emotional talking about his mom and his mother-in-law because uh, he misses them, but he knows where they are. Him and Emily uh, miss them and they suffer, but they don't suffer like people who have no hope. To not have hope is to not know where they are and not to know whether you'll see them again. What a terrible way that would be. But I tell you, people have hope to see you again, can the preacher say he's saved and walking on the street of gold? Huh? Can he say he's in the presence of Jesus? Can he say that he's got reunited with his mother and his father up in heaven? Or is everything in, in limbo with you? Nobody knows where you stand. What is it? I tell you what, I want to leave behind a testimony that I went home to be with the Lord. There are many today who have not even left a mark on this world. And I, I tell you what, I want to leave a mark. Now, I'm not talking about getting my name in the history books or being on uh, the news programs or in the newspapers. I want to leave a mark. I want to at least make a difference on a few people. If I can see a, a teenager saved, if I can see somebody serving the Lord, I'll count that as success. Amen. If one soul gets saved, I will count that as success. I want to leave that behind. That one soul that I lead to the Lord, that one soul I can make a difference with, can go about and make the difference in other people's lives. And that way my works continue to live on as these people continue to win other people to the Lord. Can you think, think about this? There's famous preachers, right? There's a guy named Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Most of y'all heard him. He's called the Prince of Preachers. Most people know that name. But you know what? There was a deacon that stood one day and preached the Word of God when the preacher didn't make it to church. And that's when Charles Haddon Spurgeon got saved. And that man who stood up that day and preached that sermon where Charles Spurgeon got saved has a part in every soul that got saved when Charles Spurgeon was preaching. Amen. Amen. It works that way. What will you leave behind? Often I'm told I don't go to church because hypocrites are in the church. If somebody tells me, I say, yeah, you're right. There's a bunch of them in there, and I'm one of them sometimes. Huh? I don't always do the right thing. Do you always do the right thing? You should. But do you? No, you don't. I'm flawed. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm trying to be perfect. I strive to be perfect, but I often fall short of that perfection. Don't you? And that, in essence, makes you a hypocrite. You know, the word hypocrite comes from an ancient word that means actor. You're acting like something you're not. A, a Christian who's doing something he ought not do, he's acting. 
Not exactly like what he shouldn't be, right? And then you got hypocrites. Oh, they're lost and they act like they're saved. But anyways, is that your legacy? You're going to be one of them people that folks use as an excuse why they don't go to church? I don't want to be that person. That's why I try to do right. That's why I strive to do right. Although ultimately I may fail in that, I'm going to work at it and I'm going to try with every ounce of my being. So I'm not the reason somebody didn't go to church. I want to leave behind a testimony. It reminds me of a story I heard a preacher tell. I'm going to try to recount it the best I can. He said that a businessman came to church one day and he said, I won't be coming to church anymore. And the businessman showed the preacher this box. And this box had a bunch of cards inside of it with names on it. And what it was was receipts. It was bills. He says, you recognize any of these names? And the preacher said, he looked down. He saw his deacon's name. He saw a Sunday school teacher's name. Uh, see, that box was filled with charge accounts of people who didn't pay their bills. The guy said, they took my groceries. They burnt my gas. And now they won't even talk to me because they owe me money. And I'm not coming to church. Well, I tell you what. There's a lot of people not coming to church for about the same reason. Uh, is that what you want to leave behind as a testimony? The world won't go to church because churches are full of bad testimonies. Amen. I, I, I want to be, I, when, I, when I leave this world, I want, I want my kids to say, I, I, I can't remember ever hearing my, my dad tell, say a cuss word. I, I, I like that. Huh? So many Christians go around with a foul mouth. Huh? We're not to talk like the world. We're to be different. Amen. Doesn't the Bible say in Ephesians 4, 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of thy mouth? That's what it says. Now, you might slip up and say one, but I tell you what, you ought to regret it once it slid out. Huh? You don't just say it and use an excuse, well, I love the Lord, but a cuss sometimes. That was on a cup one time. I said, what a dumb cup. If you got that cup, I'm sorry, but that's a dumb cup. You know, I mean, be embarrassed when you mess up. Feel bad when you mess up. Ask the Lord to forgive you. I ask the Lord to forgive me all the time. You say, you, the preacher? Yeah. Until I get mad, I ask the Lord to forgive me. Right? I want to leave behind a testimony. And I tell you, I want to leave a short account with the Lord too, by the way. I don't want my account to get longer and longer and longer. I tell you, I want to get forgiveness and get it all wiped off. Amen? The reason for this is people say one thing in the confines of a church and live another way out there. Huh? I don't want to be that way. I want to live the same out there as I am in here. It's because of that some folks will just shout and jump in church and then go out there and curse and tell tales out there. Or on Facebook, they're a totally different person. Huh? Need to be the same. Be consistent. Have a testimony. That's a great testimony. They were always consistent in showing forth Christ Jesus. Amen? I want to leave a good testimony behind. You can come here and you can shout and holler, but you're not impressing the world with that. A good testimony is vital. A testimony uh, that is not standing... Uh, Standing up, a good testimony is not standing up and saying flowery words. It's walking out that door gun barrel straight for the Lord. Now in school, student, if you were to die, what would your fellow students say about you? Would they remember you as being one just like them? Or would they say he was different? By the way, you need to be different than them. You need to be one who talks about the Lord. You need to be one who loves the Lord. That's why Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, said, Remember thy Creator in the days of thy youth before the days are evil. I know teens struggle to fit in. I used to be one a long time ago. But be different for God. That's better. Why do you want to fit in for? Huh? You struggle so much to impress these other teenagers that when you get out of high school, you probably won't even talk to most of them ever again. 
Uh, you remember all them struggles trying to fit in with them people? Did it matter that you fit in with them or not? They're gone. They're somewhere else. They're married. They have their own kids. They've got their own life. Why was you so worried about it? Worry about serving God because He'll always be around. Amen? In the workplace, if you were to die and not make it back to the job, would there be a worn out Bible left in your workstation? Huh? Will they remember the day that you bowed your head over your bologna sandwich and prayed? Huh? Will you leave a testimony behind? Remember, will they re remember when you separated yourself from their dirty video or their dirty language? Will they say hey, he, he was different? That's the testimony you need. What testimony will you leave behind? I tell you, I, I like it when, when somebody apologizes for cursing in front of me. And I always tell them, you ain't got to apologize to me. I, I mean, I'm nobody. You need to talk to the Lord about that one. Amen. I'm not your judge. He is. You'll stand before Him, not me. He's the one you ought to worry about. It's not me you need to worry about. But I do like that I have a testimony that people would do that. What's your testimony? What's your testimony in your household? What are you going to leave behind there? Well, you hear me talk about my typo every once in a while. Uh, most of the time when I mention him, he has to do with his testimony. He was a man of God, a soul winner. I want to be remembered as God's man too. Amen. The one people call when they have somebody in the hospital, the one who's on praying ground, that's where I want to be. That's my testimony I want to leave. Now another thing I want to leave behind is this. Not only a good testimony, but a worn out Bible. I asked for my papa's Bible when he died. I said, I don't care if I have any. He had guns. He had a lot of stuff. I said, I want my papa's Bible. Rightly, it probably should have went to my uncle because he's the one that bought it and gave it to him, but I wanted it because it, it was a testimony. I wanted to read the things he wrote in there about certain scriptures because he'd write in his Bible just like I write in my Bible. But I tell you this, show me your Bible. I can tell what kind of Christian you are. Huh? Some think the Bible's just a keepsake box. They might open it up and say, uh, here's a little piece of Junior's hair. Huh? Oh, there's a picture of Aunt Betty. Oh, a four-leaf clover. Well, I tell you what, a Bible's not a storage area. It's something that ought to be read. It's to be opened up. It's like bread. You need to eat it. Take it in. And let, you, let your spirit mull over it. And it'll give you strength. I'll tell you what a pretty Bible looks like. It's not a, a got Moroccan leather on the outside of it, although it may, but that's not what makes it pretty. It's not the gold edges around the papers. It's not that it's indexed. What makes a Bible a pretty Bible is its pages are all fluffed up from reading it. Huh? You, can tell, you can tell somebody reads their Bible by how fat their Bible is. You ever notice that? If the Bible's fat, that means it's been all the pages have been turned in it. A pretty Bible is not that Bible with the pretty leather, but one where the pages are disintegrating here on the very edges of it, where the oils of your finger have been turning its pages. That's a pretty Bible. When your kids are, uh, are going through your things after your funeral, what are they going to think about your Bible? Huh? Will it have that gold stuff still around the edges or you've worked it off yet? You say I ain't worked it off yet, we'll get to it. you got some time, I hope. Some uh, say I read the Bible occasionally. Well, don't read it occasionally, read it every day. The Bible is bread, like I said. It's described that way. You have to eat every single day. If you don't eat every single day, you get weak. Same thing's true. If you don't eat of the Word of God, you will get weak. You will get anemic. You need to read every day. That's why Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. You might say, well, I, I just opened it up. I say, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, where it opens, there I'll go. And you open it up and you just read something right there. You don't read another book that way, do you? You gonna pick up your novel and just open it up in the middle and start reading it? How are you gonna know who the characters are? How are you gonna know what the plot is reading any book that way? Get in this book and read it from the beginning to the end. Amen. Learn it. Know it. That's what you ought to leave behind. Oh, my papa knew the word of God, they you might want them to say. 
Oh, my mama, my mama, she knew that book. Another thing I want to leave behind is a prayer life. And I'm not talking about these frivolous little memorized prayers. One of my pet peeves at the funeral home is to hear the preacher say, let's pray, and I hear, shh, 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 shh. and they just read something. Prayer is not reading and informing God something, it's talking to Him. Huh? When somebody comes and talks to me, I don't want them to, to, to read me a prepared statement. Huh? I want to know what I can do to help them. I want to know about them. That's what God wants. Not, now I lay me down to sleep. I mean, it might be fine to teach little children that when they're small. But I tell you, you need to grow past that. I want to leave behind a list of answered prayers. Huh? Lives have been changed because I was able to get a hold of the horns of the altar and pray. I want to leave behind a faithful attendance record to church. I don't want to be known as somebody who was half on and half off. You know, I, I find it strange. If a business run the way the normal church run, it, they'd all close down. If the employees just showed up every once in a while, you think a business would last? It wouldn't last at all. Brother Rick, you've had a number of businesses. You say, if your employees just come in half the time, would your business make it? No. Matter of fact, I know times it probably was that way in some of the places. But anyways, I want to leave behind faithful, a faithful membership to the church. Now there's sometimes you can't be there. I understand that. Lord understands that too. But I tell you all to try to be there when you can. Amen. You ought to be a faithful member to the church, not just jump into this one, jump into that one, jump into this one, jump into that. That makes a good frog, but it don't make a good Christian. You'll never get the work of God done if there's no consistency. I'd hate for the preacher at my funeral to say, well, I didn't know him all that well. He didn't come to church that much. I want him to say, I'm going to miss Brother Tim who sat right there. You know, as I look out in this congregation, I, I can see where, where people used to sit who's in heaven now. I mean, I can think about Velma uh, sitting over there. I can, I can think about Brother Sam that sat over there. Edith and Irene who sat there. And Brother Jack that sat back there. I can name where all these people sat. They were here. I want that to be said of me. Of course, my place is up here. Some might say, I never cared much for the local church. Well, I tell you what, you've done laid on one side too long and your brain rolled out your ear. The local church is good. Local church is where you'll meet Christians who will encourage you. The local church is where you'll learn words, the Word of God. The local church is where you can make a difference. And by the way, it's a commandment. Hebrews 10, 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. I also want to leave a giving record behind. Now, I don't preach on giving hardly any. Anybody that's went to church here, uh, the years I've been here, have not heard me preach on tithing and giving hardly any. I'm not, I'm not really interested that much in that, although it does take things to get the church, keep the church running. But you know what? I, I, I want to I wanna be a person who's remembered as giving. Not only giving of money, but of my time. Time is more important than that paper stuff, that fiat currency that you have in your pocket. Your time. I want to be remembered somebody gave my time and somebody also gave uh, to the work. I've always given. I practice what I preach. I've always tithed. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying I practice what I preach on it. And I, I can tell you from experience that I've never lacked for anything. You say, how'd you make it? Well, I, I tell you, we, we one time didn't have enough money to, to buy supper. We had guests coming over, and Amy's made chicken and dumplings, and the chicken and dumplings burned, and we didn't have enough money to go buy any, hardly anything. We scraped together $7 and went to Walmart and bought some chicken. God always met our needs. He met my needs just like uh, He met Elijah's needs at there to the brook chair the birds came and fed Him. Huh? So I want to leave behind a good giving record. Then I want to leave behind a good... Uh, I'll, this is something, this is one kind of strange. I'm about done, I promise you. I want to leave behind a happy devil. You say, that's odd, preacher. You want to leave behind a ha happy devil? I want the demons to shout when I leave this world. That's what I want. 
I want some demon to say, what's all the shouting about? What's going on? And them say, Tim Townsend died. We ain't got to fool him no more. Yeah, that's what I want. I want them to know that I was alive. I want, I want the devil to rub his shins and say, man, I'm glad he won't be kicking me in the shins no more. That's what I want to leave behind. But most the devil yawns at most Christians. Huh? I like the devil to have to take an alka seltzer every time he thinks about me. That's what I want to leave behind. Is he worried about you? Now, quickly, and I shut my Bible to prove I'm about done. There's some things I don't want to leave behind. And I've already mentioned these somewhat, but let's close with this. I don't want to leave any question in anyone's mind where I've gone. I don't want them to wonder where Timothy Townsend went and say, I hope he was saved. No, I want them to know where I'm at. It's like D.L. Moody, and I referenced this quite a bit, but that's what excited me the first time I read this quote. D.L. Moody said, one of these days you're going to read in the paper that D.L. Moody's dead. He said, don't you believe it. He said, I'll be more alive than any of y'all. Huh? Yeah. That's what I want. I don't want to leave them behind any question where I'm at. And also, I don't want to leave anybody behind without a clear knowledge of the gospel. Huh? You know, I don't know about you, but my kids, I was always telling them to be careful. I still do that. They drive somewhere, I say, be careful. Be careful. I bet Kev's heard that a hundred million times. Be careful. Be careful what? I, I, don't, I, well, I don't want them to leave this world so early. I want to enjoy my kids. I, I want to have grandchildren one of these days, I hope. But uh, how much more important those their souls? If their body doesn't make it, if Caleb was to have a wreck and God take him home early, I'd know where he's at because he knows the gospel. When he was young, we started telling him how to be saved and he got saved early. I'd know where he's going. Do you know where your children are going? Do you know where your loved ones are going? Well, I tell you, you better, you better talk to them about Jesus. Witness to them. You tell your children to stay out of the road. Why? You don't want them to get hit by a car, do you? Reminds me of the old karate kid. Y'all remember the karate kid? He said, walk on the side of the road, okay? Walk in the middle, squish like gray. I think that's what it was. I don't want them to go squish like gray. But I tell you what, even more importantly, I don't want their soul to go to hell. I'm going to make sure that you tell your loved ones about Jesus. Don't believe, leave behind any question that they know how to get to heaven when they die. As we pray.